How much do you need to save for retirement? And is saving 15% of your gross income enough to get you to retirement. Hey, my name is Drew Blackston. I'm a certified retirement counselor, investment advisor representative, and I'm your virtual financial advisor, helping you get to retirement, helping you get through retirement, and protecting your ability to stay in retirement. We're talking about planning for retirement and how much do you need to save for retirement. And I want to look at one of the age old rules when saving for retirement, which is save 15% of your gross income. And if you do that, you will have enough saved for retirement. I hear this from all kinds of financial professionals. Dave Ramsey is a big proponent of saving 15% of your gross income for retirement. So I want to put that strategy to the test. Is that enough to get you to retirement? First, let's talk about how you can save for retirement. Well, there's a couple rules that you want to consider when thinking about retirement. The first rule you want to think about is called the 25 X rule. And what the 25 X rule says is that you need to save at least 25 times your annual expenses in order to retire. So let's say your annual expenses are $50,000 a year. So we have $50,000 of annual expenses. We're going to multiply that by 25 and that is how much we need to have saved in retirement accounts. I've lost my calculator. Hold on. All right. So we have $50,000. We're going to multiply that by 25. That's $1.25 million. So what the 25X rule says, if you're going to retire today and your annual expenses are $50,000 a year, you need to have $1.2 million saved for retirement. Now, I like to take it a step further. This is expenses. I also like to look at our income. So let's say that your annual income right now is $65,000. You multiply that by 25. So we'll take 65. We're going to multiply that by 25. That's $1,625,000. So the 25X rule using income says you need somewhere between 1.6 and 1.2 for expenses saved for retirement if you're going to retire today. Now, what does the 25X rule not take into account? The 25X rule does not take into account Social Security. Remember, Social Security is going to be a form of guaranteed income that you're going to get in retirement. Now, the first eligible age that you can claim Social Security is 62. If you do that, you'll get 70% of your full retirement benefit. If you wait until 67 to claim Social Security, you'll get 100% of your full retirement benefit. And if you wait to 70, you'll get 124% of your full retirement benefit. So the 25X rule doesn't take into account your Social Security income. It really just takes into account, hey, I'm going to retire. This is how much I need. All the other factors are set aside. The 25X rule also doesn't take into account any pensions. Maybe you are in the armed services. Maybe you work for the county, the state, the national government, and you get a pension. Well, the 25X rule doesn't take into account any pensions. So you've really got to be cognizant of, okay, am I saving enough for retirement? How do I save more for retirement? Should I save more for retirement? And there's a lot of different factors that go into that. Another rule to consider when saving for retirement is called the replacement ratio. Now what the replacement ratio is, is you take your income or your expenses, whichever one you prefer, and you put a replacement ratio on that for retirement. Let me give you an easy example. Let's say that your annual income is $100,000. The replacement ratio says take 80% of that because that's what you're gonna need in retirement income. So 80% of 100,000 would be 
$80,000 in income. So what you're trying to do in retirement is replace your annual income with 80% of that using social security pensions and your retirement investing accounts. Now the replacement ratio has been revised based on new data that instead of 80%, it's more like 60%. And the average retiree spends about 1.8% less per year in retirement. Now, what the replacement ratio does not consider, it's a big factor you've got to think about, so I'm going to star it, is inflation. So the replacement ratio is just saying, hey, this is how much retirement income you're going to need in retirement, and you need to base your retirement assets off this income. But what we're seeing is we don't consider inflation with the replacement ratio. And I like to call this reversed or it's reversed sequence of return risk. Sequence of return risk is the risk that when you go into retirement, that your assets will fall based on stock market losses for the first three years, right? Think about the year 2000. The market was down from 2000 to 2001, 01 to 02 and 02 to 03. The market fell for those three years. So if you retired in 2000, your sequence of return risk was very high because you had a loss on your retirement investing accounts for three straight years. What I'm seeing is that it's basically a reverse and it's, on, it's a sequence of return risk on your income. What that means is for the early part of your retirement, inflation is high. And so instead of it being 80,000, it's actually higher than that for multiple years because inflation is running hot. So the replacement ratio is a great way, it's a great rule of thumb, but it doesn't take into account inflation, which is a huge factor in your retirement.